Good evening, friends. It's Mel, and welcome to my kitchen. As always, I want to invite you to come in, sit down, and have a glass of sweet tea, take a load off, and let me do the cooking tonight. I hope you've had a great week. I know that we have. As always, it's been full of activity and fun and good food. Since you guys enjoyed my daughter's quinoa bowls so much last week, I wanted her to bring you another one of her meal prep ideas. And this one is a breakfast English muffin sandwich. She's going to take seven eggs. She said after the fact she wished that she had even used a few more, but she's just going to crack them open and scramble them up in a bowl. She's going to add in some seasonings to this. She's going to salt and pepper them. She's also going to put in some diced red onions and some red bell peppers. She's going to add in some garlic powder and some onion powder and some paprika. And instead of scrambling her eggs up on top of the stove eye, she's actually going to put them in this greased baking dish and she's cooking them 350 degrees for about 20 minutes. And then she's got some English muffins that she split open and she has toasted them up on a baking sheet. And she's just gonna toast both sides of those. Then she put some sliced cheese on it and I believe she had pepper jack cheese here. And you can see her checking her eggs just to kind of make sure they're firm all the way through. And then she's also put ham on the other side of those English muffins. And she's just putting that back in the oven just to kind of let it warm up and the cheese get melty. The reason that she did her eggs in the baking dish, she wanted to be able to cut them and put them on top of the English muffins. In like a little square. The thing that she said was very important about this recipe is to let everything cool individually before you put everything together. It does something to it whenever you wrap it all up and put it in the freezer and it's still warm. And she double wraps them. She wraps them in wax paper and then puts them in aluminum foil. And she'll put them down in a big uh, Ziploc freezer bag and these freeze up to two months. And then you can just take them out if you want to set you some out in the fridge and let them thaw. That's fine. Or I think she has just also microwaved them from frozen. Or you could heat them in the oven if you had time as well. And something I forgot to mention last week, that entire uh, meal prep that she did with the quinoa bowls, that came to just right over $20. Now I am going to put together a corn chowder. This is the first time I have ever made this recipe and I needed about four cups of chicken broth. So I'm just putting that together out of some chicken base here. And I had to leave this clip in because you can see my husband struggling back there. Um, I have crammed my drawer too full and I couldn't get it open to get what I needed. I had some tongs that had come open in there. <laughs> and bless his heart, he has to put up with so much around here. <laughs> My little fat hand, I could not get it in there. He got it opened up for me. But I was like, I've got to get in there. I need some knives and stuff. Anyway, I just had to leave that in. Does anybody else cram their drawers too full and then they end up not opening? I don't believe it's just me. Anywho, 
I'm going to go ahead and prep some of the veggies that I will need, just some celery and carrots, and then I'm going to use some frozen diced onions so I didn't have to chop that. And if you did not have bacon pieces, you would want to go ahead and prep you some bacon, cook it up. But I had some bacon pieces, so I did not have to do that step either. But since I did not have bacon grease in my skillet or in my pot, I just took me a little bit of olive oil and some butter and I put all my vegetables in there and got them to sauteing up for just about five minutes or so just till everything begins to get a little translucent and softened up. Then I'm gonna add in a little garlic and just stir that around for a few seconds because you know how garlic will get very bitter on you if you overcook it, let it get scorched. So I just uh, stirred that in real quick and then I'm gonna add a little flour. And I did use about a fourth of a cup of flour here. And I'm going to pour in those four cups of chicken broth after I cook my flour out just a little bit. Just cooked it about a minute. And then I'm also going to pour in a cup of heavy whipping cream. Get all that incorporated very well. And now I'm using frozen sweet whole kernel corn and I used four cups of this, maybe a little more. And then the recipe called for two potatoes, but I just had some frozen diced hash browns and when I was getting, you know, my stuff out of the freezer, I thought I'm just going to use that. And so I used about three cups of that, two and a half or three cups, a little, you know, about half of the corn that I used. I come back in with potatoes. And we're going to add that bacon in. I just got me a nice little handful. I think it called for about four pieces of bacon, but I just put bacon in how I felt like. And we're going to add some seasonings. I'm going to put in Italian seasoning. Just a good sprinkle of it. And then I'm going to use some salt and pepper. I'm going to let this soup come up to a boil. And then we'll reduce it down and simmer it and let it cook for about 20 minutes. This soup is a very pretty soup or chowder. One thing about it, when me and my husband were eating it, we said, boy, it does taste good, but it was very corny, <laughs> if that makes sense. Um, I miss the cream style corn in it. So the next time I make this, I think I will maybe use all cream style corn. Maybe the next time I, I might try it just using three fourths of the cream style and then one, one fourth of regular corn. But I did want this chowder. I knew it was going to get thicker, but I, I would rather had my corn more broken down. But it did taste good. It was very good. I've not had it since the second time, since it set, so I'm anxious to try that and see. I'm sure this is one of those soups that's going to be better the longer that it sits. And you can see we did have some salad with this. It was hot and steamy. This is a good winter soup. I think I'm just pushing forward to some cool weather getting here. I'm ready to make all these fall and winter foods even if it still is 80 and 90 degrees here and I made some just frozen garlic breadsticks with this too and garnished it with some more bacon and it was very yummy it is a pretty soup and now I'm going to take you along for some smash burgers I'm just going to run through this quick because I have done these before on my channel but I've cooked them inside. Tonight we're taking them out to the Blackstone. I've got about two pounds of ground chuck and I'm just dousing it with some Worcestershire sauce and some 57 sauce and a little Lowry seasoning salt and mixing it up. A lot of people they say you know smash burgers it's just you don't put all that stuff in it. 
but I love the way this mixture tastes in my hamburgers. A friend of mine, Nora, showed me this when we were camping one time. She put hamburgers together like this, and I just love this flavor. And what you do with the smash burger, once you get all that combined in there, you just roll up little balls. And it's probably, you know, a, a third of a pound, fourth of a pound. You, they're not very big, but you're going to flatten them out and get them really nice and crusty because you're going to sear them. So I've got a whole tray full of them prepared back there. And I just use a piece of wax paper doubled over a couple times on top of my stove to mix all that. And look, no mess. And I've got some of that wonderful Suddenly Salad from old Betty Crocker going over there. And uh, some canned baked beans. And those are those Kroger baked beans. We really liked those. I showed them to you in a grocery haul. You can also see my buns sitting back there. We like to butter the inside of our buns and toast them up on the black stone too. So here, my husband, he got a little bit ahead of me. I didn't get to show you. Um, he just couldn't wait for me. But what you do is you put those little balls of meat down there and then he takes some wax paper and pushes over the top with his uh, cast iron baking press just as hard as you can. And see how flat it makes your burgers? And that cast iron griddle, it just gives them the best crispy flavor. There's my big burger. I had these wheat buns that I had got on sale at Kroger's. I wanted a couple of those. And there's those Kroger baked beans. Those were so good. Um, some people here said they liked them even better than the Bushes brand. And there's our pasta salad and some of the fixings. It was delicious. And now I'm going to make some Southwestern cream cheese chicken wraps. I had just cooked some chicken all day in the crock pot, about four little boneless chicken breasts, and I'm just shredding all that up. I'm gonna take a couple of teaspoons of olive oil and heat it up in a skillet. My chicken is still warm, but I've got some things that I need to combine into it. And I am using a half a teaspoon of cumin, and then a teaspoon and a half of chili powder. And then I'll come in with a teaspoon of onion powder. A red bell pepper and I thought about putting it in here but I also had that fiesta corn that had a little bit in it and honestly this was a busy night so I just went with it I did add a little bit more olive oil just to kind of help things get together Just a couple little spoonfuls of garlic. So once that oil got in here and that stuff got heated, you can see those seasonings got right down into it. And then to that, we're going to add a can of rinsed and drained black beans. And I'm going to put in a cup of sour cream. And then I've got four ounces of cream cheese. And I've just kind of cut it up into little pieces. And it softens some so that it'll melt and mix down in there pretty easily. Just gonna combine all that and let that cream cheese get to melting down a little bit. Once I get it kinda combined some, I'm gonna come back in with that corn and I used about a cup of that Fiesta corn. And then I'm using about a tablespoon of lime juice, and that will really help everything come to, together, and it gives it a bright flavor. Gonna mix all that in and make sure it's getting all warm and all those um, seasonings are getting combined. This reminds me a lot of a crock pot fiesta chicken I've made before, but it doesn't have the tomatoes or the ranch dressing part of it. Coming back over this now with about a cup of cheddar cheese, and I did not have any green onions. Green onions would have taken this over the top, so if you don't have green onions, I would suggest if you just have a regular onion, uh, or a red onion, cut a little bit of that up and put it in here too. But this, it was still good, but that would have really taken it over the top. 
And now we're just going to put these in a wrap. You can eat it warm. You can eat it cold. We eat it as a dip. And I've got some wheat tortillas. As always, I'm putting too much in there. But that's all right. These crispy tortilla strips. This was something the recipe said to do. And I agree. This made all the difference. Do you remember when Sonic had those Frito chili cheese wraps where they put the Fritos in the tortillas. It's kind of that concept right there. And these little crispy things in there made it so good. And you're just going to roll it up. You can eat it right at this point, but I did want to just toast them up a little bit in the pan. We ate this a couple different ways. My daughter had nachos and cheese on the side with hers. I had mine toasted up, and I ate some more of it on the side with chips. And my husband said he wanted something to dip his in. And I said, well, ranch dressing, that would have been good. He said, bring the taco sauce out. So he dipped his in taco sauce, and he said that was perfect. This is another one of those recipes that I pent years ago, and it is becoming a favorite. This would be good in so many different ways. Even just putting it on a bed of lettuce and making taco salad with this. But there's my husband's plate. I fixed him up a couple of those and put him some Cool Ranch Doritos and some leftover pasta salad out there and he certainly enjoyed that. Our last meal of the night is something, if you've been here, you may have seen this before, but I'll show you real quick. These are copycat Arby's, and in this sauce, you're just gonna put in one cup of ketchup. You're gonna put in half a teaspoon of onion powder, a fourth a teaspoon of garlic powder, Going to do two tablespoons of brown sugar and a quarter teaspoon of salt. And a tablespoon of apple cider vinegar. And you're gonna start out with just about four tablespoons of water. If you need more, you can add a little bit later. You're gonna cook this on about medium low. Turn it down and let it simmer a little bit and it will thicken up. And if it gets too thick on you, you can just add you a little bit more water as you need. But this is a good favorite of ours too. And on the back stove eye, I've got a can of this beef consomme soup, and you're just going to bring that up to a boil, and that's what you're going to douse your roast beef in, and it just takes just a second to warm it. You don't want to leave it in there for like any amount of time, just, you know, a minute or so. Just pick it up, drain it off, and put it right onto your buns. My husband loves these. He says this sauce is better than what you get at Arby's. He thoroughly enjoys this. As always, I will leave you any recipes typed out in my description box or a pin or link to any anything that I can down below. Of course, we like to have these with some frozen curly fries. That sausage, see how good and thick it is? This is another meal that comes together so quick and easy. And you can double that sauce. I've done that before and it keeps good in the refrigerator for a couple weeks. Then another night, I'll put you a link to a video where I've made this before. This is the crock pot Salisbury steak. I didn't make this for my what's for dinner video this week. I just made this for pure love. 
If you've missed Fall Food Friday, here's a shot of some pumpkin chocolate chip muffins that I made. And I also made some pumpkin cream cheese crescent rolls. So if you missed that, I'll also put a link to that up in the cards and down in the description box as well. Friends, it has been a pleasure as always. Your friendship is so much appreciated here. I thank you for watching, and I pray that you have a blessed week. And until I see you Wednesday with some special fall soups, I send you love from my kitchen.